What is going on guys? It is your boy Sister here. Bring you guys in a Photoshop tutorial today. I bring you guys a cool little eSport banner design tutorial today. And so basically the reason why I want to do this, is I'm a little big fan of eSports. I don't know if you guys are as well. Like for the two people who don't know what that is, eSports, I think it means electronic gaming or electronic sports, which means like, you know, in terms any kind of like video game contest. Like, for, there's no way, you, this eSports, period, that's what it is, okay? So if you guys don't know what it is, that's basically what it is. Um, if you guys, like, let me get, let me know what you guys watch eSports-wise. For me, it's definitely, like, in order, by the way. Definitely League of Legends, then Call of Duty, then mm, Counter-Strike, and I don't watch so much Halo, but, you know, Halo's big as well, but I don't watch too much of that. So that's, like, what I kind of like watching. And the reason why I chose this photo, by the way, of OptiKarma, who's a part of Opti Gaming, uh, Call of Duty-wise, um... It wasn't just because he's like my he's not my favorite player or anything like that, like that. But the um the pictures that I used in this video looked really good. I love the way that it looked. And also, if you guys wanted to get pictures like this that are high quality that are not from Google, I ended up actually finding a guy on Twitter who actually took you know event pictures and stuff like that. So you guys can like get pictures from this site as well. I'm gonna put it put it in the description down below. He said it was all good, all okay to like you know mess around with it, showing on the uh showed on the um the what you call it. The video and such like that so that's him this is his twitter as well at muggy mugsy og so i want to make sure i give the proper shout out to something like this because this is not from google i didn't just google you know optic karma you know hd or something like that i did not just google that so i want to make sure that that is you know said and done and make sure like you know you know it's credit you know that's art right there that's pictures and stuff like that so if you guys want to get cool pictures like that from most i, I think he does most like you know, like like call of duty halo and uh uh call of duty halo and counter-strike all, most pictures from there so if you guys want to get pictures from there you guys could as well otherwise google or you're gonna to have to figure out some other you know uh esport photographer to kind of like you know find what you guys like like looking for so yeah that's what we're gonna be doing today this is basically like taking two base uh two different photos if this is one right here this is another one over here like the entire team and it's like a dissolve and if you're maybe not a fan of the dissolve i also had like a redition just like not putting a dissolve at all or just leaving it like you know nice clean transition and stuff like that but however the main part of like what I think of eSport designing is like the color correction, the intense, the focused. I, I like I'm gonna use the word focused a lot because like I, that's I can't really explain the color correction any other way besides saying like focus and like intense. That's all I got for you guys when it comes to color correction. But this is the CC that we're gonna be doing today. It's a pretty big one, right? As you can see, it, it kind of like takes your your facial features, kind of like you know brings them out and just like this harsh like almost grungy not really at whatsoever <laughs> contrast going on here and also the color correction as you can see there's not much blue going on over here on this right side it's almost like all gray right and then like just the picture but with the color correction i'm gonna show you guys how to do this and make it look really nice and clean and then just simple to do let's get going right now if you guys want more esport design tutorials i will definitely do some i can do a lot i have a lot of ideas but it depends so let's go ahead and shoot for 200 likes of course 200 likes on the video equals a secret down below let me freaking no guys like also we're getting subscribers like hell all of a sudden in the past week yo i'm super down but wherever you guys are coming from oh god okay let's uh let's see so this is this is the, the example right i'm gonna uncheck this and this is how it looked before so i'm gonna make sure that this right here ends up looking like this pretty pretty big difference so let's go ahead and get going so the first thing i'm gonna make sure you guys understand is talking about folk, uh, like a start and end point when it comes to taking and penciling out people when you're doing something like like this, right? When you're taking two different photos and trying to make them a seamless transition and that looks really, really good, right? So what I'm gonna say is the way I do that usually is I usually use my, like the top of someone's head and then whatever bottom part, but like right now, right, what's not gonna work is this table. It's in the way, this wire is in the way, like this one right here, just it's just gonna mess up the composition of the actual end result of your design. Um, When it comes to the top part, the chair is like okay, but for, for whatever, it, I feel like leaving it at the top of the head is the best possible decision. So Control T to free transform, of course. Alt and Shift is the keys that I'm holding right now, and I'm clicking on the uh, the top right corner and making this bigger. So I'm gonna try and get rid of this wire as well as get to the top of his head, and I'll say that that is pretty good. So we have our starting end point when it comes to his head, and the end point when it comes to like I guess you would say his arm is. Is here? That's weird. Hold on. Did I pen? I might have penciled like right here, like from here to there. Where's his arm at? I'm so lost. That was a that was a voice crack. Holy shit. I think. Oh, anyway, what doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna pencil out maybe like here, or I, I can like pencil here. But what's going on here? Huh? Yeah. Who knows? 
I kind of made this like invisible. So I kind of like made this even bigger. So I'll make it a little bit bigger because I'm not like, confused what's going on down there. And I'll say that this. It's pretty, I'll just leave it like that. Maybe you guys will tell me where his arm is. I'm lost. Anyway, so once you know the certain end point, you're just going to basically figure out what you guys want to cut out. So for me, I would most definitely say that this chair is a perfect place to cut out your starting end point. Yes, the starting end point is over here, but of course you just, you don't want to cut out, you know, for no reason the chair. Like a chair is a pretty important part of the picture. So I'm going to make sure I cut out everything else. So take my pen tool, which is uh, the shortcut P on your keyboard. And you're basically going to uh, go ahead and pen tool this out. Just like so. I'm going to click over here. It's going to give me a nice, like, very big curve. I can hold control, click on this anchor point right here, take this extended anchor point, and just kind of, like, throw it back a little bit and do something like that. Or maybe it's too much right there. I'll just move it up here, right? And then I'll just maybe, like, take my alt key, drag this point out. That way it's going to give me, an, uh, like, a kind of like an artificial anchor point, right? Because, like, it's no longer – I did press alt on this, so it's going to be straight. But this artificial anchor point – anchor point – will give me a nice little curve there, kind of how I want it, but it's gonna be pointed here, but it's not too big of a deal. I just wanna get this to look as close to good as possible. And now, if you're really not the biggest fan of this, you can just use the uh, the convert point tool, and then this will basically put anchor points on the on either side, so it gives that seamless look how you would basically have a, like an anchor point usually, right? If you guys, I'm not gonna fix it, I don't care that much right now, I'm just gonna finish out the pen tool. And then we're just going to go in like this, and then go ahead and like this, and then like we'll end it there. I think that's where it's going to end. That's where it's going to end for the tutorial at least. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all the way around to the actual banner design, connect it, and then basically everything that's in this box is going to get erased because I want to make sure this is the start. This is the end. Right click, make selection, uh, rasterize your image if it's not rasterized already, and you can just press delete on your keyboard, and then it'll delete it. <clears throat> that is that. And that's pretty good. So I'm gonna just throw this picture in behind it because what basically what this is, is kind of like giving like a seamless transition. I said this before, it's kind of like a seamless transition. And also, we're also gonna erase like this right hand side a little bit with the uh, masking tool. I'm not gonna do that just yet, but just know that we're gonna do that as well, maybe like in the middle of the tutorial. But for now, I'm gonna lower the opacity on this down to like maybe 35 or something like that or 30. And then this is kind of like our starting point and this is where I'm gonna actually throw the CC in. So this is gonna be our main photo with all these numbers. Main photo of Optic Karma. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go to my uh, little half circle right here. These are all your adjustments, your freehand adjustments. So we're just gonna go ahead and click on them, and then we're gonna start off with a brightness and contrast. Now the color correction that I am using can be used for most different color schemes. Like when it comes to color schemes, I mean like you know organizations have like different colors. Of course, Optic Gaming being like a like a blue and like a green in this case, right? Or usually they maybe they even have like white and green, whatever, right? Whatever the jersey color is, you wanna make sure that's how the color correction is like getting handled. And you know, it's 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 different for most color schemes. It's, it's going to be different for all colors, but you can use the foundation of this brightness and contrast, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that I'm gonna be doing, and then just change them and kind of like tune them to kind of how you want, you, you know, the colors to actually correspond to different color corrections uh, adjustments. So just make sure that's known, but you could use the same exact, um, the way I'm doing the color correction. So just make sure that you can, all right, you guys understand, I'm done talking. When it comes to the brightness and contrast, what I'm gonna do for the first one is just lower the brightness down to maybe neg negative 15. And we're going to up the contrast to about positive 40. Now, this will right away start to kind of, what I'm going to get right now is set the tone for the banner design, right? And also get a little bit of like, like I guess, depth in the face or more like kind of a, as you can see, it kind of like just throws this feature out just a little bit. If you look right here, that's what I'm looking. This feature is kind of like get a little bit more, you know, you can start seeing a little bit more like of the wrinkle or, or the shape of his face structure. So that's what I'm kind of want to do. Okay, for the second one I'm gonna do is the exposure. The exposure is gonna get rid of this like very odd, like I'm not a big fan of like how it look. It looks darker than it should be because of course it's depth, right? That's why it's darker. You can't see that far into this like, you know, this little space right here. But with the exposure, uh, with the settings as 0 .0090 for the offset and then 0 .80 for the gamma correction, you can see that it gets rid of that completely, right? While also kind of like putting a coat around the entire banner design makes it look pretty cool in my opinion right and like it kind of like just gives it how i feel like a photo banner should look like it's can it's completely like optional if you guys want to do it you don't have to but for me it like kind of like fills fills the banner space like a nice little coat like just it looks right in my opinion right so the next thing we're going to be doing is actually pretty important now really quickly however on the main photo right here on the right hand side of optic karma 
um, you can see his hair is a little bit too too much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make a free hand adjustment, uh, human saturation. And, however, you can also probably click on the photo itself, go to image, go to adjustments, and then human saturation. So you won't actually have a human saturation thing. But I don't want to do that because some people get kind of like confused and like if they try to fix it, it's kind of difficult to fix after like you do it on the actual photo design. So I want to do it on a free hand one, and I'm just gonna click and make sure it's clip mask. That way, it's only adjustable to the only the image that it's clip mask to. So put that on zero. I'm not changing the hue. I'm changing the saturation. Now I'm just gonna lower this down, not like so it's black and white. I'm just gonna lower it down to where the color the color can get picked up a different way, right? I can lower the saturation down to maybe like negative 15. Right, it kind of gets rid of that super like glossy orangey hair. I can even lower it down just even a little bit more, like maybe like 30, negative 30. I could do that. I can also maybe even use like yellows, click to change this to yellows and then lower the yellows down. I can do that as well, but this is the fast way and like not efficient when it comes to like doing it for like a client or something like that. But if you're doing it for a client, before you go to masters, maybe use like yellow because that's kind of what the hair is going on here. It will definitely change the hue of the like the hair. So just change it to yellow, lower the saturation of the yellow, and then that's another way you can do it. But for me, this is fine for now. I'll do this just because it's quick, right? And you guys understand. So the next thing I'm gonna be doing is actually going to be a brightest uh, not a brightest contrast, a gradient map. Now what this is gonna do is as you can see, if I just click on this right here, it'll give me a uh, presets. This is all the presets are gonna be using for what all the presets should be like made or whatever. But most likely you'll have the black and white preset. And that's the only one you really need to have right now because that's the one we're going to be doing besides another one later on but i'll show you guys how to actually get the same color but if you don't have the presets for whatever reason just change your color stops to like one black right fully black either on this side or that side and then press ok and that changes them to us uh, like completely white which is up here right press ok press ok again but make sure it is white to black right now mine is black to white if you put it in white to black you're good but if you did not and you put it black to white just click on the word reverse click on that box just like so and this is what we want to have. You want to have all the features of his face, his like hand, um, even like usually if you have another picture over here. Right now, this is like very low saturated or excuse me, low opacity on the right hand side, this other picture. So if you, you can get the same exact like feel, but this is what I want to do. I want to make sure I just take uh, all the weights, all like the highlights and kind of make them pop out more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this on normal to overlay and I'm going to go ahead, not overlay, excuse me. I'm going to throw it on to uh, subtract. Just like so, and you can see right now, you can start to see what I'm doing. It kind of like subjects or like, I guess, selects the face, selects these structures, and then it just makes them pop out more. But if I just load the opacity down, I don't need to have it super, super heavy. I'll put it on maybe like 45, 45%. Yeah, right? So you can see what happens here. So all the shadows and all the like the, the highlights, they just like fight each other and it looks really good. And that's what I mean by it gives it that focus look. I love the way this looks. I'm down for this. And uh, we're going to also throw in maybe possibly another brightness of contrast. So for this, we're going to put it on brightness 30 and then contrast negative 10. Just like so. Kind of like bring out the color a little bit more because we did lower the saturation. So that's what I'm doing here. And also his face comes out even more right now, right? After we fixed it with the, uh, the gradient map subtract. So what I'm going to do now is actually add a photo filter. Now, what this is, like, this is one of those things that I'm saying, like, if you're doing, like, a different, like, I don't know, uh, who has, like, a red jersey in, like, eSports, whatever team, I don't know right now on the top of my head, but, excuse me, I'm trying to find photo filter. Um, am I blind? Dude, I'm super blind. Okay, right there. Um, so, for, like, a red, possibly maybe you want to go with, like, an orange tint or maybe, like, something, like, orange right now is not going to work for this unless you really, really like how this looks. But if you flip through the colors just on the right hand side, just click on this. You don't have to move this at all. Click on this, drag your, your mouse down, and kind of figure out what you think actually looks best. This green, mm, not really. This like lime green, definitely not. The orange, the yellow is not working for me. And the red is definitely not working. For me, I would say this blue <clears throat> looks pretty freaking good. I think the blue like right here or like maybe like here looks pretty good. I'm gonna press okay. So what is, it basically just takes the photo filter, just takes like a, literally just takes a filter of like whatever color you chose and kind of like coats the entire banner design and kind of like evens things out as well. Kind of like an exposure, but doesn't like mess with depth and anything like that. It just puts a nice little, nice little color right there, right? And also doesn't, it kind of gets rid of a yellow face as well. So you can use that if you guys wish to. I definitely like using photo filter when it comes to things like this. And then last but not least, I'm going to use a level. Now this is something very, very like, 
very optional, very like hard to use if you guys don't use it a lot, but of course it has really dramatic um, like changes, as you can see right here, right? I'm just gonna do a simple one. I'm gonna do put it on 0.95. I'm gonna put this on two, and I'm just gonna take this right-hand side. This is what I usually do. I take my first one, put it on two, take the second box, put it on 0.95, and only move my left one, or excuse me, my right one to the left or the right. And I will say, like, this looks pretty good, right? And what I'm kind of doing is like kind of like taking a brightness and contrast, but brightness and contrast really just does brightness and contrast. But with levels, I can feel like you can start seeing the, the right-hand side also come out with color a little bit more or kind of like, like an even tone. Brightness and contrast will not do that. For me, levels look pretty good. And then once you get this going, that is your color correction. So I can just press, uh, click on the first levels, hold shift, click on brightness and contrast. It selects everything in between. Press control G, merge it all together, change it to CC. And that is your color correction that you can possibly use from a lot of different other designs. Now, that looks pretty good. Also, like you can see, like I said before, if not gray no more or anything on the right-hand side, you get a little bit more color. But to even get more color, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna throw a nice little new layer, take my brush here, I'm gonna take a blue from the shirt here. Now, I can use something like that. I'm gonna move it over just a little bit. I'm gonna press okay. A soft brush, right? Pretty big brush for the first hit. Maybe like right here. And then maybe like bottom one. And then definitely one like down here and then like over here. Right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change it from normal to linear dodge add. And this right here looks pretty good. Now, if you guys are not a fan of the color that you chose when you selected like maybe the jersey shirt, you can just press control U on the actual layer. It'll bring up the adjustment hue and saturation that will only will apply to the layer that you selected on and press control U. And I just take my hue and kind of like flip through maybe like this, that, look, that looks pretty cool, honestly. You know, that looks pretty dope. If I was not like scared to try to like do that, I would definitely do it, but I, I would have to do a lot more adjustments. And this is tutorial, so I'm gonna definitely stick with the blue, but that red or pink or whatever is going on here looks pretty damn badass. So that's what you can do. Use the hue and saturation on your linear dodge added light color. Figure out what you guys want. And then when you say you're happy with it, you just press okay and you're good to go. So um, after that as well though, I'm gonna use a focus light. So this is gonna be our, our blue light. We're gonna make another light. Control shift N um, for the what? What did I just blank out? I just put I went to go put like bright light and then I put like blue light. Whatever happened there, I don't know. I will put this focus light. And what I mean by focus light is, dude, I do <laughs> focus, dude. I, I can tell you guys, you guys really like hammer me. You guys try to figure out what I spelt wrong every single video, dude. I'm trying to figure out and like make sure I catch everything before you guys say something. All right. Anyway, I'm gonna lower the opacity down to maybe like about 50% on this focus light, which is basically like a simple uh, white uh, foreground color light with a soft brush on wherever you want. I'm not gonna put it in the middle because I want the focus to be on the left hand side. I want the right handed side to be kind of like dark and like look pretty dope. So what I'm gonna do now is simply take my text layer. I'm not gonna put Optic Gaming. I'm gonna Optic Karma, right? And uh, the font that I'm gonna be using, that's not the font. The file I'm going to be using is the Outbox ST. I've been using this for a while now. Looks pretty dope in my opinion. Pretty good size. I'm going to take my ruler really quickly. Find out where the uh, the uh, the banner snaps. I'll say right there. I can put it a little bit more farther up, but it doesn't really matter right now. I'm trying to figure out where it snaps. Snap right there. That's the middle. So now I can take my text layer. Put that right there. Make sure it's right in the middle. Uh, I can put my sponsors in there now. I know I'm missing Brisk Mate. I know that already, but I'm just gonna keep it, keep it rolling for now. I don't feel like getting it on uh, Google, but make sure you guys get all the sponsors and stuff. Uh, that green looks really nice on the Karma, and then all the sponsors on the bottom. Now, usually I would put like official Twitter of or official member of or something like that, like official member of Optic Gaming, make it look official and stuff like that. Looks pretty badass. Also, use a different font for your subtext. I like to use Nexa Bold for my subtext. Lower my uh, my points down, my size down, right? I'll put official member of Optic Gaming. Maybe I'll like select and hover over Optic Gaming, make this green as well, or whatever color that the main, uh, the organization's main color is, but definitely Optic Gaming is gonna be green, so I'm gonna make sure my text is kinda green. White is just a nice little color to go with. Also, what I can do is kinda like give it a white blue tint. So if I use a blue, give it like a whiter blue tint, something like that maybe. If you guys want to, that's a thing you can do. 
um but either way you can just leave it solid white or maybe even like an offset white almost not fully white you know what i mean so once you're done with this it's mostly coming toward like just simple final like touches so brightness and contrast i'll throw another brightness and contrast in not do any major adjustments something like that would look pretty nice right okay and then maybe last but not least is using a gradient map i do have this gradient map preset of this green to like almost black but not black it's almost like a, a lighter purple like a, it's it's black right if i double click on this and it opens hello there we go right it's not black it's definitely black but it has a, a purple tint if, if i flip through this has a red tint if i flip through this has like a green tint on green you know what i mean it, it'll have that little tint so that's what i'm going to choose but i chose purple because i think it looked a little bit better and then just right near like right here if you just select over here it's almost black but it not let it have a tint you press ok make sure the first one's green or maybe the maybe the first one should be whatever color of your actual primary color of the team is you press ok and then i like to use overlay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to lower this down and it kind of gives it that feel i like how that looks just a little bit of a different like a little final touch you know what i mean like all this stuff that i'm doing right now is like completely optional also i'm going to definitely do is change this to dissolve i'm not a fan of like keeping it like that I do like how this looks though looks pretty badass and like basically you are pretty much done like like i'm, I'm just doing like little final touches and stuff just trying to see what i like and stuff this is what you would basically be doing as well uh nah what i will do though is i'm gonna select everything Control j Control e to merge everything together use a simple filter blur gaussian blur possibly put it on about 0.5 yep press ok take your eraser Software eraser. Maybe just erase around a little bit. Kind of give it that feel. There we go. And I think that looks pretty badass. Now, of course, if you guys want to, you can add more color by using more saturation or like more brightness or something like that. But like right now, I'm pretty much done. I don't want to keep fiddling with this because I don't want to. I don't waste too much time, but. You know whatever works for you works for you right so if you guys want to as well what I, I i was doing a lot on my practice run that you guys saw over here right what i was doing a lot was taking my image or taking my adjustment and then like let's say for brightness and contrast i say like i really like how the right side looks of this brightness and contrast but not so much on the left hand side which would, would be the face so what i did was i click on the thumbnail of the brightness and contrast use a brush and if you're using a brush if you use a black foreground color it'll race on the thumbnail so if you look on the thumbnail i use a black and look it erases but if i use what it's erasing is the actual color correction and if i use an eraser you can't see it on black as you can see i'm pressing eraser on black on the thumbnail it's not working but on white it'll work and you'll see that it is that same exact thing so whatever one you use i'm going to use eraser and make sure my foreground color is white and i'll erase the, the left hand side and then I can keep that left hand side very like vibrant, but also have my right hand side that I like that really dark like contrast and like leave it there or maybe even lower the past just a little bit. And it just give it that little that you know, kind of like the, the free adjustment that you kind of want, right? And so for me, that's basically it. Also, I, I did say I was gonna do this, right? Take my main photo, click on this little uh, mask tool right here. And what happens is it gives the thumbnail just like how the brightness and contrast is. So what I just explained with the brush and eraser having it on white or black, same exact thing concept goes on here so basically i can take my eraser my white eraser but for whatever reason let's say you did this in the beginning right and let's say like you like didn't like how you erased it what you can do is you can go back to this as in like click on the thumbnail and just select the other opposite color of whatever other one you're using so if you're using a brush now you have to select white if you're using an eraser like i'm doing right now select black and then if you fill that back in you'll see it actually fills it in it changes over here and it's just like it's a really easy way to erase like safely so now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just click on a soft brush and erase very, very slightly, just like so. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm actually gonna use my black one. I don't like it like so much over there, but like right there. And you can see it looks pretty good. All right, so once you get your fade going and then everything else is pretty much set, you're pretty much good to go. And then you have your dope optic gaming banner or whatever the hell banner you're using. And it looks pretty dope. So the color correction, of course, is the main reason. It looks really, really good. I love how it looks. It has that little focus feel to it. Thank you guys so much for freaking watching. Uh, make sure you guys follow me on Twitter, at SysWHQ. 
Um, also, do not forget to follow, uh, even follow my self I, I don't want to say follow, but I also check it out. But you can also follow it, self slash SMHQ. For any premiums, it packs as well as 5 bucks, actually $3. And don't forget to subscribe, of course. And if you guys want more eSport design tutorials, just let me know. Comment down below what you guys are looking for. I have an idea for some more, but just comment down below whatever the hell you guys want to see. I'll try to do it and all that cool stuff. Also, follow me on Twitter, really, because I'm going to be doing something pretty cool over the weekend. Uh, most likely, it's going to be a... Well, when you're watching, this, it's going to be Friday. So, like, a day after this video is uploaded on the actual day that it is uploaded, I'll be doing, like, cool little portfolio reviews, and I'm also going to do something else. I'm not going to tell you guys yet, but check it out. Talk to you guys later. So, switch you out. Peace.